Hey everyone, coming to my chair. All right, I've got a weird uh, setup today. I couldn't find my tripod, so I've got the camera just kind of like sitting there precariously if that falls well. That's no good. Which knife should I use tonight to open this? Okay, this knife I've had longer than this one. This one is, they're both by, by a cold steel. This one is a uh, three and a half inch blade, fully serrated. Now the problem with that is over the years, the serration gets damaged. There are ways to sharpen serrated edges, but the cold steel serration is a very unique design. So over the years, that serration has worn down, but man, it's a solid knife. And that lock, I'm pushing it towards my fingers right now. That lock is super solid after 20 years I've owned this knife, 20 years. And uh, the nice thing, uh, what I love about it, is I can just pull it out of my pocket and flip it open like that. This is also cold steel. This is the Kadu. And, um, it's got a unique little uh, ring release. So I pop it like that, open it, and then I just pull that key ring, boom, pop it with my thumb, and then close it. I think I'll use the big knife to open this uh, package here. Let's see what's inside. <clears throat> How you guys doing? Hmm, everybody good? Channel's not big enough to really get comments yet, but we'll get there. All right, so this is some vinyl records. Packing slip. There we go. Now you'll notice that these, let me, let me grab a vinyl record. Here's a, uh, a folk record I picked up recently. I'm not going to listen to it. Well, I might listen to it. This is, uh, I pick up odds and ends. This is, I believe, Polish? No, Yugoslav. The Yugoslav Seventh Day Adventist Gospel Singers and Tamboritza from Cleveland. Anyway, this is an old record. I'm guessing it was probably in the 1980s. I picked it up because it was sealed, and also because it's rare. It's, there's no copies on Discogs for it, and I like to catalog stuff, even if I never listen to it. So this is a 12-inch, or a, what most people would call an LP. And this is probably, yeah, it's a 10-inch. It's a 10-inch record. So uh, I picked up two of them. There we go. On one side... It says the Rocky Valentines. On the other side, Starflyer 59. So there's two songs from each. I guess you would call this a split single. Maybe you could call it a split EP. These terms are kind of vague these days as to what is a single, what is an EP. Can I share with you all a little history on these terms? Um, or did I do it in my first video? Well, I'm going to give it to you again. And if it's a repeat, well, you'll live. So back around the middle of the 20th century, the mid 1900s, if you wanted to put out a song, you put out a single, it would go on like a seven inch and in fact, even before those days, back when you had the um, Edison records and stuff like that. They put out singles. They were on bigger, like, 8 or 10-inch discs. But those were more like shellac. Those things break, even if you just look at them. But it was a single. And then there'd be one song on each side. The shellacs, I think, played at 80 RPM. They needed a very special stylus. Uh, the singles from the mid 1900s came out on, I think it was called styrene and later called vinyl, what we call vinyl today. Um, 
if you had a whole bunch of them collected in like a book, then you had a record album. Think of it like a photo album. All of these singles all compiled together in a book. So you've got a record album, an album of singles. And then they started working with the technology of vinyl records and they got the grooves closer together. So they could then put two tracks on each side of a seven inch, really max out the real estate there. And they called that an EP. It stood for extended play because it plays longer than the seven inch. Well, then they really got to work on technology and they said, well, let's just make the disc bigger. And they did. And then we got our LP or the 12 inch. There are some seven inch or eight inch records that I've seen that say LP on them. And there are 12 inch records that say EP. And as was popular in the dance craze and also the hip hop craze of the 1980s and the 1990s, you'll see a lot of 12 inch maxi singles where they would have one song on each side, but it plays at like 45 RPM. And it's just a ma massive 12 inch record, but with one song on each side. Um, I have a couple of those that I will show you in a future video. Starflyer 59, as you know, is my favorite band. Jason Martin, the front man, the only constant member of the band for 20, no, 30 years now. Thir next year, this year, 24 will be 30 years. And here we have the Rocky Valentines. That's Charlie Martin, Jason's son. He's a vocalist, but he sounds like his uncle Ronnie from Joy Electric. Um, I've been listening to Starflyer since the very beginning, and uh, I wanted to pick these up. Let's open these, because I got one in each color. People are like, why do you need two? I told you, I'm a collector. When you open vinyl with a knife, you got to be very careful. You find an open gap, and you just work at that spot. You don't want to dig in and damage the record or the inner sleeve or the outer sleeve. And once I have a spot opened, then I can just go like that and work my way across. Never leave the plastic on the outer sleeve because over time it will warp the record. It might take years, but it will warp the record. All right, let's pull this out. Ooh, that is thin. That's not like a regular record. That's a little thin cardboard there. This one is a nice cream color. Let's see if we can get this out without getting uh, boils on the vinyl. Mm, that's a nice, that's a nice cream color there. Love it. The Starflyer tracks on this record are not original. They are new though. They are re-recordings of earlier songs. These songs are major awards and I was 17. They can be heard on Spotify and I encourage you to give it a listen. Let's throw this one back in. I've got a couple other uh, Starflyer records in odd shapes or I should say not odd shapes but non-traditional shapes. All right, here we go. <clears throat> I'm uh, partially recording tonight to get my mind off of something. I just paid a good amount of money to have this basement waterproofed uh, at the end of last year, 2023. And I came home today to a room right over there that is flooded and I need to talk to the people that did the work and find out what is going on. So I'm a little stressed about that. All right. Ooh, this one is like a, um, kind of like a, a chalky, a chalky pink. I'm not very good with colors these days. Is that like a mauve? I don't know, but that's, that's awesome looking. I have a son-in-law that is really big into Starflyer. I'll have to share these with him. 
maybe he'll get one. Very cool. I'm so happy to have these. There were only two colors released. Oh, and the big news was just announced by Jeff Cloud at Velvet Blue Music. Jason is working with Tooth & Nail Records possibly one last time. That was the first label that Starflyer was on uh, to put out a full length in 2024. So we are all waiting on that record on the 30th anniversary. And many fans are thinking it will be his last because his son is now doing so much with music. We'll see. I, I'm 50-50. I could go either way. Jason has talked for many years about uh, hanging up the, uh, the guitar, so to speak. Although I think true musicians never hang it up totally. We'll see what he does. Maybe he'll move into production. I don't know. Looking forward to it regardless. There was one other thing I was going to mention tonight, but uh, I can't remember. And it doesn't matter. I hope you all are well. I'd love to see your comments in the videos. And you have a great week. Bye now.